Hi, this is the CAD CAM Lessons channel, and in this video I'll show you another operation for creating 3D models based on 2D sketches in FreeCAD, and it will be an operation that allows you to create solids of revolution. FreeCAD is a fully free 3D modeling program in which we can create our own 3D models, among other things for 3D printing or for collaboration with other people. And FreeCAD can be used both as a hobby and commercially. Anyone can freely use this system, and to use FreeCAD, you just need to download and install, and you can already use this system. We don't have to register anywhere, we don't have to provide our data, we simply download, install, and can start creating our own 3D models. Before we start, just a quick note, you'll find links to my FreeCAD mini courses in the description, it's also a great way to support the channel. Now let's get started. And now I'll switch to FreeCAD and show you how the operation that allows you to create solids of revolution works. When it comes to working in parametric 3D CAD systems, we very often work in such a way that we create a 3D model based on 2D sketches, meaning we create flat geometry, and based on this flat geometry, using appropriate solid operations, we create a 3D model. And such a 3D model can be created in stages. And creating one 3D model, one single 3D solid, we can use different modeling operations. And one such operation that allows you to create a 3D solid based on 2D sketches is the revolution operation. And this operation allows you to create solids by rotating a sketch around a specified axis. And just as with the pad operation, meaning the extrude operation, in this case the basis of the 3D solid will be a 2D sketch. Therefore, we'll start by creating such a sketch, and this time we'll create a sketch on the XZ plane. First, I'll show you such a simple example. I'll create arbitrary geometry without focusing on dimensions. I just want to show you how this operation works. As you can see, we have arbitrary geometry, and I'm now selecting the revolution operation. And based on this sketch, a solid was created by rotating the sketch around a selected axis. And by default, the selected axis around which this sketch was rotated is the vertical axis of the sketch. And in this case, the vertical axis of the sketch coincides with the base Z axis. So as you can see here, changing the axis to the base Z axis, the solid looks the same. If I now select the X axis as the rotation axis, the solid was created this way. If we select the Y axis, there's no effect here because rotating this sketch around the Y axis won't create a solid because this sketch is created on the XZ plane and rotating this sketch around the Y axis won't produce a solid. I'll return here to the base Z axis. And in this way we can create solids of revolution. And here we also have a parameter specifying the rotation angle. We can reduce this parameter. And then the solid will be created in such a way that this sketch will be rotated at a specified angle. And okay, this is precisely the basis of this operation, the basis of the revolution operation. In this way we can create solids of revolution. And this is the simplest variant of this operation. We simply create a sketch and use one of the basic axes of the coordinate system or one of the basic axes of the sketch to create a solid by rotating the sketch around the specified axis. Of course, using this operation we can create more complex shapes. We can create another sketch and here I'll actually use a polyline and create roughly this shape. Okay, we have something like this, and based on such a shape, we can also create a solid. As you can see, this is a simple operation to use, and in the case of simple elements, there's not too much difficulty in using this operation. As I mentioned, when creating one 3D model, we can combine selected operations together. We can start by creating a solid by extruding a sketch. Okay, I'm creating a solid this way, and now I'm creating another sketch, and here we'll create another fragment of the solid. And we'll create this fragment of the solid using the revolution operation, and in this way, using the extrude and revolution operations, we've created such a solid. And here, as you can see, in the case of the revolution operation, we're still using the basic axis of the coordinate system. However, in some cases, it may be necessary to use a different axis, and we can do that too. I'll delete this sketch and create a new reference sketch that will be offset from the coordinate system. I'll create a rectangle roughly in this place. Okay, I'm closing the sketch and now based on this sketch, I'm creating a solid.
and I'd like to do the same as in the previous case. I'd like to create a sketch here based on which we'll create a solid by rotating the sketch. And here in this case, we can create a construction plane. With the control key, I'm selecting these two faces so that a construction plane can be created between these faces. Okay, here we need to rotate this plane around the x-axis by 90 degrees. Okay, and now on this plane I'll create a sketch. And here in this case, the vertical axis of the sketch passes through the center of the solid, and we'll be able to use this axis to create a solid by rotating the sketch. I have the sketch created, I'm selecting the revolution operation, and this is what it looks like in this case. Here we're not using the basic axis of the coordinate system, but we're using the vertical axis of the sketch. If we select the horizontal sketch axis option, the solid will be created this way. Here the rotation of this sketch will be created by rotating the sketch around the horizontal axis of the sketch. And if we return to the vertical axis of the sketch, it looks this way. And okay, we have such a solid. When it comes to the revolution operation, for this operation as an axis, we can actually specify any geometry. We can even create such geometry, and now I'll delete this operation. I'll delete this sketch, and on this plane I'll create another sketch. I'll create, for example, a circle in this place, something like this, okay. And now I'll create another sketch that will be reference geometry, based on which I'll specify the rotation axis. I'm selecting this plane, I'm selecting sketch creation, and here I'll draw a line, okay, in any place. Of course, we can precisely specify the position of this line, but for now I'll create this line in any place. I'm closing the sketch and now I'm selecting this sketch, I'm selecting the revolution operation. And here by default a solid was created by rotating this sketch around the vertical axis of the sketch. But we have the select reference option here and we can specify any geometry that will be the axis of symmetry. For example, I can specify this edge as the rotation axis, and here this solid was created this way. I can select another edge, but I have a reference edge here. I'm indicating this edge. And the solid was created in such a way that the sketch was rotated around this geometry. So, as you can see, for this operation, we don't have to use only the basic axes of coordinate systems or sketch axes. We can practically draw any line that will serve as the rotation axis. Another similar operation to the revolution operation is Groove, and this operation works very similarly, only in contrast to the revolution operation. Just as here, we created a solid by rotating a sketch around a specified axis. In the case of the Groove operation, we remove material from the solid by rotating a sketch around a specified axis. I'll return to this example in a moment, but now I'll create a new project, and here we'll create an example model. For example, we'll do something similar to the first example. and we'll create this solid using the revolution operation, okay? And now I'll create another sketch also on the X, Z plane. And here, for example, I'll create something like this. Then I'm selecting the groove operation. And now, based on this operation, material was removed from the solid. Of course, we could have done this using one operation. Here, I just wanted to show you the operation of the groove operation. Of course, we can do this in such a way that in this sketch, we simply create the appropriate shape that we want to rotate around the specified axis. Here, I'm just creating simple shapes, but these shapes can be more complex. We can actually create any closed shape. And now, based on this operation, such a solid was created. Earlier, we did this using two operations. Now, we did it using one sketch. But as I said, I just wanted to show you the operation of the groove operation. And now I'll delete this. Okay, we'll delete this operation too, and I'll create a new sketch. I'll create a new solid. And as you can guess, we can also remove material from this solid based on a sketch by rotating the sketch around a specified axis. I'll create another sketch on the XZ plane. And here I'll create some shape. Okay, and now I'm selecting the groove operation. And based on this sketch, 
material was removed from the solid. And the groove operation works similarly to the revolution operation. Also, as a rotation axis, we can specify any geometry. I'll create another sketch on this plane. For example, a circle in this place. Okay, and I'll create another sketch that will be the rotation axis. Okay, and so I'm selecting the sketch, I'm selecting the groove operation, and material was removed by rotating the sketch around the vertical axis of the sketch, but we can select the select reference option and we can specify geometry relative to which the sketch rotation will be performed to remove material. And here we can also specify the angle value at which the rotation will be performed. And okay, this was another simple operation that allows you to create 3D solids in 3D CAD systems. And as I said, when creating a 3D model, we can combine different operations together and using relatively simple shapes and relatively simple 3D model creation operations, we can create quite complicated models.